Hey everybody, hi, uh, sorry, I'm putting it together. Hi, this is Terra Illumination. Uh, we're going to be doing a little video here for the Cancer New Moon. And that would be on June 23rd, okay? Coming up soon. Actually, let me do another, do let's do it, let's start doing a doodle. Make an Astro Doodle. We had Astro Babble, now we're, <laughs> now we're doing Astro Doodles, yay! Let's have a look. Okay, this is just, you know, like a little general doodle for everybody. We're going to put Aries on the horizon, uh, just like everybody's in Aries. Of course, it's, we're not, but it's the general energy for the whole planet. And just remember that wherever the hot spot lies in your chart, that's where you're going to feel it. So what have we got? Uh, it's, a, it's a new moon, a uh, Cancer new moon. Okay, let's just do this. Again, folks, I just do this because I have to do it anyway for my own homework. And I'm just going to share it with you, okay? And this is on, what is it, uh, Friday, June 23rd, okay, 2017. All right, so uh, that's what it looks like. I'll, I'll show you close up a little bit. I'm just going to make a sketch first of all. So first of all, we do have the sun and the moon together right here in Cancer at two degrees. And then we have Mercury almost next door right over here, okay, in Cancer at five degrees and then a little bit farther along, almost halfway through the sign. We've got Mars, okay, at 15 degrees. So that's a lot of activity. Look at that. That's an awful lot of energy down there in the sign of Cancer, okay, in its hometown. Okay, so it's like Cancer is home team for Cancer. Yay! So all Cancerians, I guarantee you're going to feel it. You're going to feel this new moon, that's for sure. Okay, so there we have it. There's the sun, there's the moon, there's Mercury, and there's Mars, <clears throat> all piled up together. It's like a mini stellium. 2 degrees, 2 degrees, 5 degrees, and 15 degrees. Oh, hold on. There's the 5. Just do it properly. Okay, see? There it is. 5 degrees for Mercury and Cancer. All right. So I'm just going to roll through all the planets, all right? Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus. Let's have a look. Venus is over here somewhere like about 18. Okay. So lovely, lovely Venus. God damn. It's so nice in its home sign. 18 degrees. Venus is so happy there right now. And um, Mars, we've got Mars. Uh, Jupiter is still over here doing its thing, okay, in Libra. Uh, around, like, what is it, 13 degrees, something like that. Pretty, pretty close. And Saturn, oh, oh. Saturn's over here, 23. And uh, let me see. Um, yeah, it's still retrograding, grinding its way through backwards over here, retrograde, okay, through the high degrees of Sagittarius. And then we've got Pluto over here, good old Pluto, it's around 18 degrees now in Capricorn, okay, and then we've got, uh, wait a minute, Uranus, we, we forgot Uranus, okay, Uranus is over here way up at 27 degrees. Okay, so there's Uranus in Aries. Aries. And uh, Neptune is over here around 14 degrees. So Neptune is very, very strong right now. Neptune 14 degrees in Pisces, just hovering, just sitting there because it's, it's pretty much uh, stationary all right so the Neptune energy is very 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 strong right now it's at like the maximum point of ascension for example if the chart was this way and if the uh, Neptune was at the, um, the 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 pinnacle of your chart like the career point your place in the world it would be very very strong right now Neptune energy Pisces energy especially and here's a little Chiron okay all about healing, okay, in Pisces too, and that's around 28 degrees. 
So let's fill it in. Let's party with the colors, okay? So, um, oh, oh, no, 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 no. We got the North Node. Whoa! Big, serious energy right now. North Node in Leo. Okay. Um, okay, let me put some names in so we get, uh, get a bit of clarity. Aries. Taurus. Gemini. Cancer. We got that. I know there's other videos out there and it's all fancy on computers. I don't really do that. I just wing it by hand, okay? And we got Leo. We got Virgo. We got Libra. Yay, go Libra and Scorpio. Okay, peaceful over there right now. Sagittarius up here. Very strong energy. And uh, Capricorn over here. God, it's turning into a mess already. I'm sorry, people. God. Capricorn up here. And that's Pluto. I should write in all the names of the planets as well. God, this is going to take forever for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, and then there's Aquarius over here. Okay. Aquarius. And then there's Pisces over here. So let's uh, let's mark it out just so that you know. Okay, here's Aries on the horizon right here. Okay, and Uranus is in Aries right here. This is Uranus, the squiggle for Uranus, and that's Aries. Venus is in Taurus right here. Okay, and Sun and Moon are in Cancer right here. Mercury's in Cancer right here. Mars is in Cancer right here. That's a lot of Cancer energy. We got the Leo, a North Node right here, Jupiter and Libra here, Saturn and Sagittarius here, Pluto and Capricorn here, and so on and so on. All right, let's put in some, uh, let's mark it up. Um, it's a new moon, so it's it's all squashed in around here. It doesn't have any direct hard, hard angles with anybody, but it's pretty close to um, like an out of sign opposition here with Saturn, but we're not going to mess with that, okay? So let's put in the big obvious one. The one that's still here with us. Yay! Thank God we've got this little beauty. Okay, let's just put it in now. Uh, green. Let's, you know, let's do green. This is all the fun green, happy fun, super, super, super charged positive energy of this big, fat, massive grand trine. Okay? And this has been going on for a while, and it's going to keep going for a while. It's very, very supportive. Um, the Saturn energy... Uh, is really uh, acting to manifest and help to ground us as we discover more and more and more about our own truth, about how things really are as opposed to how we think they are or used to believe they are. In other words, the real universal truths are being exposed, especially when it comes to our unique identity uh, and awareness of ourselves over here in Aries with, with the Uranus energy, okay? And that's all supporting a very, very nice evolutionary drive to move towards our Leo North Node, the collective Leo North Node, where we're all supposed to be our shiniest, brightest, most wonderful, like rock star, movie star selves, uh, expressive, creative, having lots of fun, and being who we are in a way that is fun, fun for yourself and fun for everybody else in such a way that you shine brightly enough that you trigger other people to say, you know what, screw it. If they're going to do it, I'm going to do it too. So there's a lot of beautiful, positive momentum energy for all of us to evolve. Okay, that's what this is all about, is evolution. And moving away from the Aquarius South Node, of course, which is over here, which means leaving behind all these like selfless, uh, altruistic attitudes and behaviors uh, and beliefs about how... Uh, you, you might might have you know given away all your power to the to the group to the collective for the for the good of the collective uh, in a very very neutral like logical manner because that's a very good thing to do however you end up having pretty much dissolved yourself your ego to the point where it's just like oh wait a minute who am I now the beauty of that of course is you're going to bring all your south node gifts into the future, the evolution. We'll probably do another video about that, okay? Because we have a, we have some time to do this. 
But anyway, let's keep going. So there's kind of like this, this like this secret kite going on here right now. I won't talk too much about it yet, but it's here. And it's all about our evolution, the evolution. So watch the Leo North Node videos, people. I'm probably going to do a separate new video to add on to that playlist. Anyway, so at this Cancer New Moon, we still have this big fat fire trine, and it's very good news for everybody. And you're probably all of you feeling the shifts that are happening, like things are being shaken up, truths are being revealed, um, shocking realizations about how awesome you are in some ways and how maybe um, misperceived you were in other ways. But either way, it's good news because it just gets you further and further and further on your path to evolution. So that's just going to keep going anyway through the background. Next, let's just, I'm just filling in the blanks, okay? So bear with me, hang in with me. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. I already put these together, but I forgot to put them out. Duh. So you can see it better on the video. All right. Terra Illumination, uh, Astro Doodles, uh, Cancer New Moon, June 23rd, 2017. So uh, let's just fill in a couple of other things. We do have a pretty hard square here between Mars and Jupiter. So there might be a lot of, um, let's say, uh, drive and pressure to, uh, to, uh, exp to like, you know, get your feelings out in terms of relationships. And, and it might be a little uncomfortable. Uh, like people might be getting a little over assertive in how they feel about what's going on in their relationships to the point where it's almost aggressive. We don't want to go there. It's okay to be, have drive and everything, but with this hard square, um, it could trigger these kind of like, you know, butting heads type of energy, no matter how well intended. Okay. So just, just cool it. All right. I'm just saying cool it around the new moon when it comes to asserting yourself. All right. Now, also, we still do have a pretty hard square here. Sorry, that's 18 degrees. 18 degrees in Pluto. There's still a pretty hard square here. You know, it's part of that big red triangle we had for a while. Uh, with this square between uh, Jupiter and uh, Pluto. So it's still putting tremendous amount of pressure on our relationships to grow and evolve. But this is not the sweet, super fun type of supportive pressure. This is the, the grinding, like tectonic plate kind of pressure coming from Pluto, pushing hard, hard, hard on uh, lovely, wonderful Jupiter saying, OK, Jupiter, everything you might think is great. I'm just going to I'm just going to show you everything that's screwed up. And it's about time you realize that. And we're going to do it. And I don't really care if you hurt or not. That's the Pluto. Because Pluto's just doing its job. It doesn't care about whether it's hurting your feelings or you're like, oh, you poor thing. Pluto doesn't do that. Pluto doesn't give a rat's ass about your feelings. Okay? So things might feel a little bit strained in terms of relationships still, still going on. But this pressure over here has gone. It's, it's waning. It's quite far off now. So let's not worry about that one too much. Now, uh, we're going to get to the new moon in a minute. Okay, so just hang in. All right, I just want to point out some sweet spots here. Okay, so um, we do have a nice fat, fat trine over here. That's, that's very supportive energy. Uh, between Mars and Chiron. So there might be a sensation that um, there's a lot of activity going on and drive to get some healing done, to get some deep inner healing done because we're doing the reveal it to heal it uh, theme yet again because Saturn over here is still very, very, very hard pressed onto little Chiron. Poor little Chiron, poor little Chiron, where all our deepest wounds are buried and all our deepest sensitivities, all our failings, our flaws, our desire to hide our head in the sands and ignore everything that's not working. And uh, Saturn is saying, excuse me, uh, you, can, you can ignore all that crap if you want to, 
But I'm just letting you know, if you don't deal with it, you're just going to carry it on. And it's just going to be like sickly baggage that you're going to carry with you forever. So it's about time you reveal it to heal it. And guess what? You've got the support and the drive to heal it, to reveal it. So that's cool. So if you feel that there's a lot of stuff coming up that is really like basically really, really uncomfortable, deeply buried stuff, really, really deeply buried. And it's kind of bubbling up almost like pus or tar or like lava or in some kind of goopy, horrible way that's really unpleasant. Please allow that to happen. Allow It's kind of like a gentle purging type energy. And Saturn is pushing down, like putting pressure on a pressure point deliberately to try and wake you up to say that this area needs attention and healing. OK, so guess what? Um we do have, I'm going to do one more sweet spot. Let me just do one more sweet spot. That's between Pluto and Venus. How yummy is that? Oh my gosh. Look at this. You see, there's, what is it, like 18, to, it's almost exact. This super big fat um, harmonious energy between, it's earth energy. It's really solid, beautiful earth energy, like, like with all this excitement here and all this pressure here and all this painful pressure here, even with this support, uh, our evolution can still feel quite choppy and bumpy. Like there's an awful lot of amazing good stuff happening at the same time that a lot of very stressful stuff is happening. And so we're having to carry a lot of the energy of ambivalence, which is very hard for people to do in general. How do you carry the energy of feeling really, really good at the same time that you're feeling really, really bad about some things, okay? And I'm using the word feelings deliberately. You'll see in a moment. Uh, so with this beautiful Pluto uh, Venus uh, thing here, it's really solidifying and grounding uh, our values and what we feel and what uh, all these evolutionary energies that are happening over here in Pluto, uh, up, up with Pluto, where it's really, really putting pressure uh, on us to like restructure restructure, restructure. Anything that is fake, bogus, is crumbling and falling apart. A lovely, lovely Venus is saying to everybody, don't worry, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay, because what really, really counts is going to start to become very apparent. The, the Taurus energy knows what counts. Venus knows and understands what really, really works, what's really beautiful, what's really valuable over the long term. And Pluto is going to reinforce that. So let's just take advantage of that. Now, back to this new moon. Okay, so over here, let's just put a big circle around all of that stuff. Okay, all of that energy there, that's Cancerian energy, like multiplied many times over. So what's what's so what is what's it all about um there's like uh it's going to be a powerful like not a trigger but like an emphasis like a drive for new beginnings especially new starts and new beginnings when it comes to the foundations of a certain part of your life wherever this ends up in your chart okay this is just a universal chart for everybody, and I placed Aries on the horizon like they always tend to do. But this particular point, two degrees of Cancer, that could be anywhere in your chart, depending on who you are. And, you know, this is not an astrology channel. I'm just trying to give you the general vibe and the mood for the new moon coming up so that you're prepared. So with this sun and moon aligned as a new moon, it's going to be a very, very strong energy about uh, basically like new foundations, new new energies, new feelings about home, new feelings about family, maybe like a home family business, big shifts and changes in the home, uh, a lot of activity and uh, perhaps um, drives to change everything in the home. Uh, and it's all from the heart. Cancerian energy is very, tends to be very mushy and you know, soft and caring. So even though there, this Mars energy is right here and it can be very driven normally, in the sign of Cancer, at least it's driven uh, to be um, nurturing, okay? So you might feel a, lot, a strong desire to nurture yourself, 
nurture your home, nurture your family, and a drive to improve everything that's not working properly in the home and make changes and adapt and go out and get and do what has to be done to make your home a healthier, happier, better place. And moving, changing if, if, if necessary. And Mercury here, also deeply bedded in Cancer, is going to amplify that. So the desire to communicate all of this stuff about new beginnings, new starts, new homes and family and business, uh, new careers uh, because of this. Okay, there's a pretty strong opposition here. I haven't marked it, but it is sort of there. So especially when it comes to relationships, it might feel that uh, there's a really strong drive to like advance, move forward. I really like... Uh, getting a brand new perspective on the past and everything that has led you to this moment in life where you just think, holy shit, I thought my life and world was all about this, this, and this. And now I'm realizing it's all about that, that, and that. And there's no point in looking back. It's time to move on, move forward. It's very strong energy of, of drive, 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 go, go, go. Make new cool stuff happen and communicate all about it very, very clearly and openly. And But hopefully, not too aggressively, not too assertive. It's okay. Like asser assertion is okay. That strong, healthy expression of Mars energy, but aggression, that's not cool. That's being forceful. That's being abusive. Okay. So you don't want that energy in and around the home. All right. So also because it's Cancerian energy, there's, there's going to be a strong emphasis on intuition deep, deep, deep feelings about the foundations of your life and your world that may be uh, changing in very, very profound ways because of this big, wide opposition from Pluto and Capricorn, like huge tectonic plates type of changes in the home where, you know, the energy of tectonic plates. Okay, there's the, like, like I, uh, over here on the West Coast USA, it's all just one big tectonic plate or like the Fukushima thing, tectonic plates of Japan on the Pacific plate, where these big, big plates butt ahead each other and they're grinding, okay? And just for the example for this little video, it's like, <laughs> it's not going to stop. Pluto energy is not going to stop. And the uh, Cancerian energy has to adapt. Uh, it's either adapt or die. You know, that's really kind of what it is with Pluto energy. If you try to resist the Pluto energy, you're just going to get ground up in a meat grinder or like getting squashed be too, between two tectonic plates uh, and turned into rubble. So there's no point in trying to fight it. Now, again, uh, with this new moon energy here, it could be very exciting, too, because of the Mars energy. Um, uh, but again, you see this, like we, <laughs> it's like, it's almost, we can't escape. Remember uh, last a few weeks ago and last month we had, we had this big ongoing fat red triangle here. Well, we've got a big fat new one here now. And it's just like, God, is this ever going to stop? Now it's pretty wide, so don't take it too seriously, but it is there. So it could be feeling like there's tremendous pressure to adapt and evolve and change regarding home and career and career and home. My place in the world outside of the home and in contrast to my home, my foundations, my stability in life and at home. And it could be that there are tumultuous changes that are happening in your fundamental relationships that are affecting the dynamics between home and career or being deeply bedded in home and safe and comfortable and warm and fuzzy where cancer energy likes to be, where in contrast, Capricorn is saying, you need to get out there. There's something big and important that needs to be taken care of, cancer, okay? If you wanna run a home business, that's fine. Or if you wanna run a business from home or run your home, <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to contrast the polarities here. So, uh, like, let's just, so uh, let me just show this to you and let's hold, let me just hold it still for a minute and you can digest some of my astro doodle. And if you have any questions, oh, you know what, let me highlight, let me get a highlighter and I'll highlight the name so you can see things a bit more clearly. Stay there, stay there. Um, we, uh, we need, uh, I'll have to go get a big highlighter. Don't go away, don't go away.
I'm sorry, this video has taken way longer than I expected, but you have to understand, I take hours and hours doing this at home anyway, and I'm just trying to do it quickly for you guys so that you get a glimpse of what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, behind the scenes at Terra Illumination. Yeah, that's what it's about. Behind the scenes at Terra Illumination. Here's what we do here in the laboratories, in the science labs of Terra Illumination. All right, there, I'm just going to rattle it all off. It's not that good. Maybe this marker is kind of like burned out. Anyway, we tried. Okay, so let's do it this way. Let's have a look again. Okay, so here's Aries energy, all right? Here over here, Aries. Here's Taurus. Here's Gemini. Here's Cancer. Here's Leo. Here's Virgo. Here's Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, and Aquarius, and Pisces. Now, this pattern is basically what I think of as sacred geometry. So on the 23rd, this is pretty much what the big planets are doing, what all the major planets are doing. I don't know enough about all this to deal with all the asteroids and the fixed stars and all of those magical um, elements, because that's all happening too. And there's a lot more stuff going on here. I'm just focusing on the, the raw, heavy, the big, heavy energies that will affect everybody in a very clear way. So let me... Just so that you understand, because I'm not going to do a ton of reports for everybody. This is just my own homework for myself, and I'll just keep this handy for the next few weeks. So, for example, if you're a Virgo, I would, we would be looking at the chart sort of like this. Okay, so um, like all these energies that we discussed would be happening in this part of your life. For example, the new moon would be up here in your 11th house of community, of hopes and dreams and wishes, okay? Uh, if you're a Libra, it would be over here. So you might be fairly feeling some serious, like, rumblings going on in terms of your career, okay? Big shifts, new opportunities in terms of career, your place in the world, your status in the world. Um, God, we've started now. I might as well just keep going. So if you're a Scorpio, it would look kind of like this. So if Scorpio would be on the horizon here and the new moon would be up here in your ninth house of wisdom and higher neural learning and knowledge and travel and higher consciousness. And you might be getting these blinding new driving ambitions and awakenings and new starts in that area of your life. OK, God, I wish I thought about this earlier. Not, let's just keep the doodle going. OK, we're going to keep it spinning. All right. Stay there, people. So if you're a Sagittarius, okay, can you see this over here? So the Cancer New Moon is going to be in your eighth house of intimacy, shared resources, sex, death, taxes, uh, very, very, um, uh, especially when it comes to the world word intimacy. Uh, a lot of people are struggle as much as what they think they might want it. A lot of people are terrified of intimacy, but Sagittarians, there's no way out of it. There's going to be some like surge of new happenings in regards to uh, joint finances, intimacy, or something like that. Uh, Capricorn, it looks like this. Okay. Uh, let me just get a little bit closer. Okay. So dear Capricorns, you're going to have stark new beginnings in the area of your fundamental relationships. And that could be business partners. Uh, spouses, husbands, wives, um, live-ins, uh, not so much girlfriend, boyfriend stuff, but definitely very significant like chosen relationships, like contracted relationships, marriage, business contracts, and things like that. There's going to be massive new starts and drives and beginnings happening over there. Okay? And you're going to feel it really strongly, Capricorn, because you're one of the cardinal signs like Capricorn, Libra, Aries and Cancer that are heavily marked right now by the planets. There's no escape, Capricorn. Just hang in, be strong, okay? So if you're an Aquarius, it's going to happen over here. So, okay, does that make sense? Can you see that? So if you're an Aquarius, uh, the, uh, the new moon is going to be uh, over here in your sixth house of like health and healing and day-to-day uh, -day habits and activities. And 
being of service to others, taking care of yourself properly, your, your day job, and just purifying and clarifying and cleansing up your life, so to speak. So you're going to feel that over in that part of your life. That's where you're going to get all your new starts, new drives, new ambitions, new uh, communications happening over here for you, Aquarius. Pisces, okay, it's going to be in your fifth house, okay? So, dear Pisces, uh, there could be some serious rumblings going on in the world of love and romance. Fifth house, okay? Uh, and that could, um, it could also be like creativity. Let's just say amazing new creative opportunities, expression, self-expression, uh, taking risks, doing something uh, exciting and fun, taking uh, uh, a lot of self-expression, okay? So that could be very good for you because uh, Cancerian energy is very, uh, let's say, harmonious with you, dear Pisces. And then Aries, of course, we just did full circle. Wait a minute. No, we started over here, didn't we? Taurus or Gemini or something. Anyway, so for Aries, this new moon is going to be down here right in the foundations of your life, literally your home and your family. And you're going to feel it, serious rumblings and sh changes and activity and a lot of shaking up going on in the foundations of your life and communicating about it and really feeling it and probably feeling the desire to do something about it. What that'll be, who knows? But it, it will happen in the context of significant relationships and it will affect your place in the world over the long term, very, very long term. So hang in, Aries. Let's keep going. I think I started with Taurus. No, I didn't. I don't know. No, I didn't. So with Taurus, okay, it's going to be in your third house. So you're going to be feeling this new moon very, very much in your third house about communications, listening and speaking, uh, just general activity, business, uh, the exchange of information, the transceiving of information, communicating and receiving information and knowledge. Okay, you're going to feel it. You're really going to feel it there. And you're going to want to do something about it, like a lot of creative self-expression, tremendous drive to be creatively self-expressive. Okay. Uh, especially when it comes to speaking the truth and bringing higher knowledge and wisdom into this world for others to enjoy, okay? And Gemini, now did we start with Gemini? No, we didn't. Um, and we started with Virgo, that's right, so we have a way to go. Hang in, people, now that we've started, I can't stop, all right? Sorry, this is going on much longer than I had planned. So with Gemini, if this is you on the horizon, you're going to feel it in your second house. So that's very much to do with value, values, your worth, your sense of self-worth, your sense of like, what do I really value? What do other people really value in me? And you're going to also sense it in a little bit in the eighth house of joint resources over there. In other words, uh, like how you are valued by others and how you value others and bring those shared values, shared resources into your life and integrate them in a way that's very effective and new. And it's going to be very dynamic. It could be just as simple as money, serious issues regarding money and finances uh, could be coming up. Uh, so over here, let's see, cancer for you. Well, it's going to be in your first house. Whoa, go cancer. So there's a lot of like energy and let's just say new start pressure on Cancerians to become the new Cancer. So this is going to be a big one that this new moon is going to like have a huge momentum for many months to come. It's almost like a whole new year. It's almost like a birthday new moon if you want to look at it that way. So for Cancerians, you might be feeling like this is a whole brand new reboot, restart of your whole freaking life, having lived through a, another year cycle to get where you are today, okay? So this might be a very life-changing new moon for you guys, Cancer, right over here. And again, you're going to feel it, especially in profound relationships, because Capricorn is still living right there, right in the middle of your seventh house of profound relationships. There's no way out of it, Cancer. I know I get a lot of reports from Cancers and comments like, when is this pressure going to end? because it's long, long-term transit, it's very heavy, 
And it's very, very challenging. And it does affect Cancerians at the foundations of their life, their home, okay? So Cancerians, please understand there might be some very serious rumblings, new beginnings in the foundations of your life, especially in the relationships concerning the foundations of your life and how that is going to play out in the outside world in terms of your wacky career opportunities because your career house is uh, ruled by Uranus, uh, spontaneous change, uh, uniqueness, uh, sh st shocking, striking, brilliant uh, uh, type of uh, expression of energy. So Cancerians, you're in for a very, very interesting time right now. I'm just letting you know. Hang in. Be strong. If you need to, check in with Terra Illumination. Uh, you know, if you want to do private stuff, we can do that. Uh, I, I would understand, okay? So Leo, let's have a look. With Leo on the horizon, you're going to get your new moon kind of in your 12th house. So over here, like your 12th house. So it could feel like there's an awful lot of, um, like, it's going to sound very strange, but like a real drive to check out and tap into your spirituality, tap into uh, like the, um, just like letting everything just unwind, okay? It's almost like giving yourself a huge excuse to have a break and just check out. If you need to go lock yourself in a bathroom and cry your eyes out for a few weeks, that's fine. That would be perfectly healthy, to, a uh, really good, cool thing to do. Don't be shy about it. Uh, it's probably not how you would want the world to see you, but um, it would be very, very good to do a lot of soul searching, deep, deep, deep soul searching through this uh, when this new moon starts, Leo, at least for a few weeks, go really, really deep. Allow yourself to feel everything that's been buried and hidden, uh, especially with your emotions and your feelings. Uh, and Allow a sense of new beginnings to occur, all right? And Virgo, I think we started with you, did we? Yeah, um, yeah let's just say that we did. So it's going to happen in your house over here, your 11th house of community. Okay, let's just leave it at that. I went way, way long. I didn't plan to go this long, but um, let me just, I'm going to try and hold this steady for you. Oh, I got an idea. Stay there. Let me try something, a, a trick. See if I can do this. How does that work? How does that look for you? Okay, so I'm going to hold it steady. This is for Aries. This is for Taurus. This is for Gemini. This is for Cancer. This is for Leo. This is for Virgo. This is for Libra. This is for Scorpio. This is for Sagittarius. This is for Capricorn. Oh God, I'm, just, I'm gonna be, end up confusing everybody. Please don't write and, and say how I confused everybody. I already know, I'm sorry. Uh, and then the, here's for Aquarius, all right? Okay, and then here you go for dear Pisces. And then we're back to Aries again. So I'm just gonna let it sit there for a few moments. I hope you get something out of it. I hope it didn't hurt anybody's feelings or trigger any sort of like anger or pissed offness or resentment. Please make the best of this Cancer New Moon. It's very, very strong. It's very supportive about nurture, self-nurture, new beginnings in that part of your life, uh, foundations, home, family, okay? Nurture and care, the drive to nurture, the drive to take care, okay? So I'll just leave it like that. I'll just be like, like that, okay? And then I'll go back to this. Ding! The magic. Okay, so there you go. Thank you for listening, everybody. I hope you get something out of it. If you want to chat, you know, get in touch. Go to tarotillumination.com and we can really get into it, all right? So, uh, and by the way, all this energy we talked about, that starts on the 23rd and it's going to rise up to a crescendo to the full moon in early July, okay? So this energy we're talking about right now, we're, 
we're moving into it because this report is being made in, uh, you know, in the middle of June. So we're leading up to this and we're coming out of the really, really exciting energy that happened on the Sagittarius full moon, which is now playing out for the next two weeks. So from here onwards, June 23rd, the Cancer New Moon, you're going to deal with this energy and this is going to play out everything that we just talked about. Uh, it's going to play out over the two weeks until the Cancer Capricorn full moon. OK, which is happening on July the 8th. But that's another video. OK, so bye bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. I hope you get something out of it. Bye.